Would you like to live longer, healthier, sexier? Then I've got the supplement for you. N-acetylcysteine. Antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-death. Just kidding. Today we're going to go over N-acetylcysteine and all the benefits that it has. So let's get into that now. First thing we're going to do is look at this graph. So as we can see on this graph, the main thing that we care about here is glutathione replenishment because that is the holy grail of antioxidants. This is one of the most potent antioxidants the human body has. Now from this graph, we can see that N-acetylcysteine or NAC is a precursor. It is essential for the production of glutathione and glutathione replenishment in our system. Glutamate, which is also known as glutamic acid, and glycine are also involved in the production of glutathione. Now, now you might be wondering if the main goal is to just increase glutathione, then why don't we just increase our glutathione supplementation by taking glutathione supplements. Glutathione is actually not very stable and it's easily broken down by the enzymes in our stomach. So none of it really gets absorbed. That's why we need to take glutathione precursors like NAC or glutamic acid or glycine. Now there are liposomal glutathione supplements which do help with increased glutathione absorption. However, that may lead to an excess amount of glutathione causing toxicity and that's not something that we want. So it's much safer to go with the precursors, especially N-acetylcysteine as we'll find out in these studies. So why do we even care to increase our glutathione levels or to replenish our glutathione levels? And that's because those glutathione levels decrease as we age. Oxidative stress increases. If you can look at this graph here, we see that the glutathione levels are in the red and the oxidative stress levels are in the blue. We see that around age 30, glutathione levels start to drop and around age 50, oxidative stress levels start to accumulate and rise because of that decreased glutathione level that's occurring inside of our body. So it is important to make sure that you have enough antioxidants, especially in the form of glutathione, as you age because as we see here, the levels decrease and oxidative stress increases. And the last thing we want is oxidative stress especially on our body and in our brain. Here are some benefits of NAC supplementation. It boosts immune system, helps stabilize blood sugar, and detoxification. Tylenol overdose is the main use clinically in the emergency room, but it can generally be used for improving liver and kidney health. NAC can also be used to reduce heavy metals. It also can improve respiratory functions. In this first study that we'll look at in terms of COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, the study states that the main conclusion of this meta-analysis is that oral NAC is more efficacious but not more harmful than placebo in the treatment of chronic bronchitis. The range of the dose that was used in this study was 400 to 600 milligrams for three to six months. NAC is also commonly used to reduce inflammation and mucus in people with lung disease. It can break down mucus and replenish glutathione in the lungs, which reduces airway damage and breathing difficulties. Now we're gonna look at NAC for longevity or anti-aging effects. This first study here goes over the supplement Glynac, which is a combination of glycine with N-acetylcysteine to check and see if it improves glutathione levels, decreases oxidative stress and inflammation, along with other stuff as well. So let's take a look. Now here's a quick little photo showing all of the things that Glynac can potentially help with. So it can help with glutathione replenishment, mitochondria and energy, metophagy, inflammation, nutrient sensing and insulin resistance, endothelial function, genomic health, stem cells, cellular senescence and oxidative stress. And on the outsides here, we see improved gait speed, improved waist size, improved blood sugar and muscle strength. So this study was a double blind randomized controlled trial consisting of 24 older adults and 12 young adults. For the older adults, they were 61 to 80 years old with a BMI above 27. The young adults were 21 to 40 years old. The purpose of the young adults was just to check blood levels for a healthy young adult person to compare those levels with the older population. The young adults did not actually go through with the study. They were just kind of as a baseline to compare with older subjects baseline and older subjects that supplemented with Glynac. Dose that was used in the study was 100 milligrams per kilogram per day each for the glycine and N-acetylcysteine. Now we're gonna go over the results from this table right here. What we wanna see are changes of older adults taking Glynac at weeks zero versus weeks two versus week 16. That means there are changes that are occurring 
because the patients are supplementing with Glynac. So as we can see here, there are changes in the older adults supplementing with glycine versus the ones that were taking placebo. And also the longer they took it, the better the results. So as we see here, total glutathione levels in the red blood cells increased over time, especially when compared to placebo. Also, we see levels of reduced glutathione increase as well, whereas oxidized glutathione remains stable, which is what we want. We want the ratio of reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione to increase based off of the supplementation because that means we have a increased antioxidant potential over time by taking this supplement. So now if you look at these physical outcome measures such as physical function or grip strength or chair rise test or six minute rapid walk test, body composition, BMI, fat mass, weight circumference, we see that there are changes in the older adults at zero weeks versus 16 weeks. And there is no difference between a young adult and an older adult after 16 weeks of supplementation with Glynac, which is pretty good news for us. That means a older adult after supplementing with Glynac for about four months is comparable to a young adult that's not taking any supplementation, basically comparable to natural levels of a young adult in that age range that I specified earlier. That's very, very good benefits for our Glynac supplementation. Something interesting from the study is that Glynac showed these effects while NAC alone did not show some benefits in a mice study. We compared the effects of NAC alone versus Glynac on cardiovascular function in old mice and found that only Glynac improved cardiac function and inflammation and this was not achieved by NAC alone. Human clinical trials supplementing NAC alone did not find any improvements in red blood cell reduced glutathione concentrations, elevated oxidative stress, or inflammation. Now we'll have a second study here that's titled a randomized controlled clinical trial in healthy older adults to determine efficacy of glycine and N-acetylcysteine supplementation on glutathione redux status and oxidative damage. Now there are some abbreviations that I want to go over first which is MDA, malandialdehyde, GSSG which is oxidized glutathione, GSHF, which is reduced glutathione. And again, reduced glutathione is what we want because that is what is able to have its antioxidant effects, whereas oxidized glutathione is not able to exhibit those properties. It doesn't have any antioxidant effect. And then GSHT is total glutathione. So for this one, the doses used were three different doses of a low, medium, and high dose. The low dose was 2.4 grams, medium dose of 4.8 grams, and high dose of 7.2 grams all with a one-to-one -one ratio of glycine to NAC. The duration of the study was two weeks long and all groups were compared with a placebo group with about 29 participants in each group. Similar to the first study, there was a healthy adult group that actually did not go through with the supplementation of the clinical trial. Only the older adults went through with the trial. The younger adults were just used as a baseline measure to see if an older adult supplementing with N-acetylcysteine can have comparable levels with a healthy young adult. The range for the young adults in this study was 20 to 40 years old and 60 to 85 for the older adults. The older group was considered to be generally healthy without diabetes, high blood pressure, alcoholism, smokers, or dementia, to just name a few. Now, from the results here, Glynac did not increase the glutathione ratio of reduced to oxidized and did not increase total glutathione levels. But for the subset of people that had lower levels of glutathione to begin with, levels of glutathione were increased at the medium and high doses. So for those that had a normal amount of glutathione to begin with, the supplementation did not really help. But for those that had reduced glutathione levels, supplementation did increase their levels and help with all of these other functions. Now the good news for that is that the people that needed glutathione and supplemented with it got the benefit they wanted and the people that did not need it but supplemented with it did not experience any side effects or any harm from supplementing you know, in excess amounts or something like that. The doses did not cause any harm even for people that had normal glutathione levels to begin with. This Glynac precursor supplementation did not overextend and create an excess supply of glutathione causing toxicity or other side effects. So that's good news as well. The conclusion of the study summarizes what I just said by stating, in summary, this suggests that Glynac supplementation is safe and well tolerated in older adults and may support GSH biosynthesis in individuals with increased oxidative stress and compromised glutathione storage. In individuals without an increased oxidative burden, circulating GSH remained stable. Now let's go over some dosing for NAC and Glynac. So usually the range is around 600 to 1800 milligrams of NAC supplementation. Now you want to be careful if you are taking Glynac, which is glycine with N-acetylcysteine. And the reason for that is you don't want to take excess amounts of glycine. You may have some glycine in your zinc, such as zinc glycinate, or a more popular one is magnesium glycinate. 
You don't want to overextend and oversupply the amount of glycine your body is getting by taking it in all of these different forms, in your zinc, in your magnesium, and now in your NAC supply. You want to try to keep your glycine to NAC supplementation at a one-to-one -one ratio, but again, also not taking too much glycine in the other forms in combination. Now, if you recall that glutathione graph I showed earlier, where around age 35, levels started decreasing and getting to a very, very low amount at around age 50, 60, and 70, we want to kind of supplement based on those levels. So the higher dosing if you're in the older adult group, lower doses if you're in the lower age group. So someone that's maybe 35 or 40 years old may only need 600 milligrams while someone that's above 65 may need 1800 milligrams. But you always want to start low and then slowly increase the dose so you can make sure that you're actually tolerating the supplement at those higher doses. You don't want to just start at a high dose and then have stomach cramps or some kind of stomach issue and then just throw away the supplement because you just kind of went all in at once. Start low, 600 milligrams, maybe even 300, and then every two weeks or every month, slowly increase to your target dose based off of the effects or your age group that you are in. Most supplementation for Glanac will probably have to be for an indefinite period of time, especially if you're an older adult, because as we saw, levels just keep dropping and keep dropping as we age. And again, N-acetylcysteine and glycine both are very, very safe and have very low side effect profiles, very, very minimal side effects, if any, maybe just some gastrointestinal effects. Again, if you take too high of a dose too quickly, but for the most part, very, very safe supplements, especially for the short term. Long term studies are not really, you know, at that level yet where we can kind of determine that, yes, after 10, 15 years of supplementing, this is a very safe supplement. However, chances are that it is going to be safe because there is no short term effects. Most likely these won't go into long term effects over time. We just kind of have to see what the studies are saying. Um, in that regard. One thing to keep in mind that although we do have some studies here showing benefits of NAC, especially for longevity and chronic bronchitis, as I mentioned earlier, these were very, very small studies, only about 12 or 15 adults in every study, which is extremely small, especially compared to prescription medications that have 5, 10, 15,000 people participating over a long period of time, maybe one or two years. This was about three months and only 15 participants. So very, very small studies. So take these results with a grain of salt, but they do seem to be showing benefits with very, very minimal side effects. And it's also a pretty inexpensive supplement. We also don't really know if increasing glutathione levels as we age is going to actually make us feel healthier and live longer because we don't really have any clinical benefits or clinical studies that show that benefit. We're just kind of assuming because we can confirm that glutathione levels decrease as we age, oxidative stress levels increase as we age, and as we age we have less energy, more brain fog, and just kind of other chronic diseases pile up on top of each other because our body is just generally unhealthier. So we're assuming that if we increase glutathione levels, we can decrease oxidative stress as we age and then feel the benefits of a younger adult, even at a older age, such as 65 or 70, maybe not as like a 15 or 20 year old, but generally feeling at least 10 or 15 years younger, hopefully by supplementing with something like N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor for glutathione, which is a very powerful antioxidant. That's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.